the Hulot Star 10. Maximum working height is 10 meters or 33 foot. Those who intend to use any machine with characteristics of weight, height, width, length or complexity which differ significantly to the training they have received should ensure that they receive a familiarisation to cover the differences. It is the employer's responsibility to ensure that all operators using equipment are adequately trained and familiarised to comply with current health and safety legislation. Machine specific familiarisation should follow on from basic training and cover the manufacturer's instructions and warnings, features of the specific model, control functions, safety devices and emergency lowering procedures. All of the above are to be found in the operator's manual supplied with the machine. Be sure that the operator's safety and responsibilities manuals are complete, legible and in the storage container locked in the platform. Hydraulic ramping. Your machine may have hydraulic ramping built into it by design. This means that the machine may not stop immediately when a controller is released. Decals are located around the machine. Familiarise yourself with the different decals, ensuring that you understand items such as safe working load, wind speeds, floor loadings, crushing points. Check for hydraulic oil leaks and proper oil levels. Check for battery fluid leaks and proper fluid levels. Before checking any batteries, ensure that you are wearing the correct personal protective equipment. Check the following components or areas for damage, improperly installed or missing parts and any unauthorised modifications. Electrical components, wiring and electrical cables. Hydraulic hoses, fittings, cylinders and manifolds. Drive and turntable motors and drive hubs. Wear pads. Tyres and wheels. Nuts, bolts and other fasteners. Platform entry mid rail. Lanyard anchorage points. Function tests. These are designed to discover any malfunctions before putting the MUP into service. If a malfunction is discovered, the machine must immediately be isolated, tagged and removed from service. At the ground controls, put the key into the key switch and turn the key to the green position which denotes the ground controls. Pull out the emergency stop. The machine will now be switched on. The up and down control will not work unless you press the corresponding button at the bottom of the mast. Press and hold the lift button. Operate the paddle in the green direction to elevate. Operate the paddle in the red direction to bring the machine down. Holding the turret button in, push the paddle in the black direction. This will rotate the turret counterclockwise. Push and hold the button and pull the paddle to the blue direction, which will rotate the turret clockwise. Push and hold the jib function and push the paddle in the green direction which will lift the jib and in the red direction which will lower the jib. The machine is also equipped with a hand pump system. Elevate the machine as normal, then opening the front covers, walk round to the right hand side of the machine and locate the lowering handle on the side of the batteries. Engage the lowering and elevating handle into the holder and then locate the necessary control on the side of the machine and use the handle pump to bring the machine 
into a safe position. This handle will elevate the mast, it will rotate the turret and it will steer the wheels. Use the decal on the side of the batteries to identify the correct button which you need to press. To operate the controls in the platform, turn the key to the orange position, climb into the platform and connect your harness. Pull out the e-stop and the machine should have an audible alarm and the red light should flash. Push in the e-stop and the light should go out. This tests that the e-stop is working. The machine has two paddles, one paddle for forward and backwards and one paddle for turret rotate left and right and steer left and right. No function should work unless the enable button has been pressed. The machine also has a three-way selector switch. Ensure that the machine is correctly orientated round to the arrows located on the chassis and the drive panel. Select drive and steering, push the enable button and move the drive controller in the green direction. This should allow the machine to drive forward. This control is proportional to your movement. Bring the control paddle back to neutral and the machine should stop. Pull the control lever back to the red direction and the machine should reverse back. Bring the control lever back to neutral and the machine should stop. Press your enable button and using the drive paddle, check that the steering wheels move left and right. Now select turret elevate and turret rotate in the center. Press the enable button and elevate the turret up in the green direction. Press the enable button and bring the turret down by using the paddle in the red direction. Press the enable button and use the paddle in the blue and the black direction to ensure the machine rotates. Move the toggle switch now to the jib function, press the enable button and use the green and the red arrows to elevate the jib. Checking elevated drive speed. Elevate the turret approximately two meters from the ground. Change the selector switch to drive. Enable the button and using the drive paddle move in a forward and reverse direction. The machine should now move forward and backwards slowly. Elevate the jib, now drive forwards and backwards. The machine will now drive slowly elevated. To test the emergency lowering, push in the e-stop. Now go round to the back of the machine and pull up the red or black valve. This will lower the mast back down. With the mast lowered, now locate the jib lowering function and press the button. This will now lower the jib.